before we do, I'd invite you to stand and join me in the pledge, and then Councilman Brian Powell will bring the invocation. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for your goodness and your graciousness towards us. We ask you your hand to be upon our city continuously. I ask you to bless us as we have deliberations tonight. You will help us make the best decisions for our city. Thank you for your love and for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Brian. All right, I'll... Uh... Now call to order this regular meeting of the Springdale City Council. This is Wednesday, September 25th, 2024. And uh, with the, in, in the, uh, lieu of uh, our city clerk, Denise Pierce, uh, Anna McKinney, my executive assistant, will be calling the roll. Mayor Sprouse? Here. Powell? Here. Taldo? Here. Watson? Overton? Here. Lawson? Here. Bailey? Harriman? Here. Ernest Kate? Here. All right, thank you. We're at item four, comments from our citizens. If we have residents of Springdale that would like to come and address the council, uh, we ask that you come to the microphone, clearly state your name and address, and please keep your comments brief, understanding that the council won't take action tonight on what you bring forward. Uh, is there anyone that would like to address the council concerning an item that is not already on tonight's agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the approval of minutes. Council, you've had an opportunity to look those over. If there are no changes or additions, I'd entertain a motion to approve them as presented. So moved. Second. second. We've got a motion to second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right. Item six, procedural motions. What's your pleasure, Council? I'll move for both A and B. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve both A and B. You guys bringing that up? There we go. Call for the vote. That's all that's here. Carry six zero. All right. Thank you. Now we have a couple of. Uh, recognitions to make. I'm going to ask uh, Carolyn Reno. I saw Carolyn come in with Angie. And Angie, you come with her, please. And uh, y'all meet me up here at the podium, please. get it figured out. All right. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> we have an opportunity tonight to recognize Carolyn. She's uh, retiring after 40 years. 40 years. Yep. 40 years with the city of Springdale. Um, and uh, uh, just a great employee for our museum. Angie, do you have anything you like to say um, just real quick Carolyn was recognized by the State Museum Association in March with the Peg Newton Smith Lifetime Achievement Award much deserved and um, Shiloh was recognized all over um, for what we do and it's really mostly because of the work that she's done yeah. well it's a it's a small token that we get to uh, we're privileged when we have uh, uh, employees who have served our residents so well for so long. And uh, Carolyn, we certainly wish you the best. And uh, we have a little something for you here. This is something we do for our employees. This is a, a, a local glass artisan that, uh, that creates these. Uh, nice. Yeah. And they're, they're heavy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Would, is there anything you'd like to say? Oh. Um. Come on up. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to say how much I uh, enjoyed all my years at Shiloh Museum and how much I enjoyed 
working um, for the city of Springdale. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes over the years, and I just think the city's great. I hope it still, uh, I hope as it grows that it maintains this really nice small town, town vibe. I mean, the people here are just so friendly, and it's just a different vibe than the other uh, places in Northwest Arkansas. So <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate it having worked for the city all this time. Thank you, Carol. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, just as a, a reference for those of us old timers, uh, I guess when you came to work, it was the old public library building. That's right. Correct? We were in the old public library building, and I was there when we, uh, our board started a building fund, and they did a lot of hard work. A lot of old time Springdaleans got out there and raised the money. We had to move out of the library, and then we moved into the one that we're in now. And uh, it's just been quite a, a journey for the museum. And the museum is, I can't believe this, but 56 years old. And I've been here there for 40 years of it. And that's the part that's like, I just thought of it the yeah. other day. And I was like, really? Yeah. I did? But I did. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. All right, and now Debbie Pounders, here she comes. All right. That'll leave a knot on somebody's head. It, it will. <laughs> this, this has Jay's name all over it. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, Debbie, uh, 20 years? 20 years. The city of Springdale. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the, all <laughs> you've done. And uh, would you like to say anything? Or, yeah. Patsy, you want to say anything? It's up to y'all. Okay. This has absolutely been the best place to work. You know, I, and as old as I am, I've worked a few places. So, and I've had the best boss anybody could possibly have. Good department, good people there. So I'm, I'm going to miss everybody, but yeah, I really like sleeping late. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I like sleeping until 6 o'clock. Sleep till 6 o'clock. Congratulations. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, I don't know what we would have done without her. I mean, you know, every department's got to have somebody that keeps things together. And Debbie's always been that person that kept things together, kept the files together, talked me down a couple of times when I probably needed to be talked down, probably missed a couple of times when she probably should have, but we're, we're going to miss her. But we hope she has the best time she could ever have in her new line of life. Great. All right, those are, those are special to get to do, and we're sure thankful for our employees and the ability to recognize them. Uh, item nine, Planning Commission Report and Recommendations. Uh, Patsy Christie, Director of Planning and Community Development. Patsy. The first item is a request to rezone property located at 3702 North, North Oak Street. Um, it's, the first request came in to rezone it from a1 to SF2 and MF16 or 24, and we asked them at the meeting to downgrade it to MF4. A lot of that area is in the floodplain. They agreed to that, so you're seeing the amended uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springdale, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from single-family residential district SF2 to low medium density multifamily residential district MF4 within Springdale, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. And this is property that came out of Bethel Heights that came into the city. So, Patsy, what, what was those two different colors? Could you explain that, the slide they had just a minute ago? Well, that's just so you know that 11.74 acres is SF2, which is low density single family residential. I'm sorry? Is that what it already is, SF2? It was SF1 because when we transferred from um, Bethel Heights to ours, it, all the low density residential came in as SF2. So that SF1. SF1. So it's, F, it's going to SF2 for right. that portion. The rest of it's going to MF4. Correct. Correct. 
Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion second to approve the ordinance. Any other questions or comments? Is there one in, anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this? All right, and this is a call for the vote. Carry six zero. Move emergency clause be adopted. All right, call for the vote on the emergency clause. Carry six zero. And as usually the case, they have emergency clauses because there's pending action on these properties. Uh, the next one is a request to rezone uh, 2.64 acres on 1500 Wagon Wheel Road. And this is the property for the new fire station. Planning Commission reviewed this request and recommends approval. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springfield, Arkansas, and the plat there too, by rezoning certain lands from general commercial district C2 to institutional district P1 within Springdale, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance pass. Second. Motion second to approve. Any other questions or comments? Anyone in the room? All right, let's call for the vote. Carry six zero. Move merge clause be adopted. Second. All right, this will be a call for the vote on the emergency clause. Carry six zero. The next item is to rezone uh, 5.02 5 acres at 312 East County Line Road. Again, this was a rezoning request that came in to request it from MF12 to MF24. Planning Commission recommended they downgrade it to an MF16, and that's what they're presenting to. Uh, that's what we're presenting to you. That uh, applicant agreed. Uh, the title of the ordinance reads an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Spring of Arkansas and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from medium density multifamily residential district MF12 to medium high density multifamily residential district MF16 within Springdale, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. All right, that's a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. Other questions or comments? Anyone in the room? All right, call for the vote. Carry six zero. Then merge clause be adopted. Second. Okay, call for the vote on the emergency clause. Carry six zero. The next item is a request to rezone 1.16 acres located at 1232 West Stoltz Road. The request is to rezone the property from A1 to Institutional District P1. This is a site that's had a residential care facility on it for years as a non-conforming use. This just brings that small portion of that property into compliance for a residential care facility to be looked at that location. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springfield, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from Agricultural District A1 to Institutional District P1 <coughs> within Springdale, Arkansas, and declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance be adopted. We have a motion. Do we have a second? And, and you said that this is to bring it into compliance? I'm sorry? You, you said this is to bring this property into compliance? There was a residential care facility at that location. It has since shut down. There is a group that may be trying to rezone, I mean, to reopen it, but it needs to be rezoned to a P1 if they want to do that. It was a residential care facility when it was annexed into the city, but it's been shut down for more than six months. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Other comments or questions? Anyone? <coughs> sure, I'll ask a question. <laughs> Seems like Generally speaking, we when we zone something to P1, we kind of have an idea of what it will be used for, a church, school, other, some other things, I guess, are in P1. But generally speaking, well, they already kind of know what they're wanting. 
why they're wanting it P1. Why There's a very limited a number of things that they can do in a P1. Okay, tell residential. us what those are. Uh, I didn't. I didn't bring my iPad. <laughs> I did. We've done them so many times. I didn't think you'd be think asking me that, it. so I didn't bring my iPad for that one. Uh, it has a residential care facility on it. I think they want to open that back up. But the same thing I tell you about any other zoning district. The worst thing that you think can happen in that zoning district, if it's okay, it's okay to rezone it. And a P1 is pretty limited, very limited. Ernest is going to tell you in just a minute. Is this the same owner that had it before? No. They've sold the property, or they're, they're anticipating selling the property. Yeah. P1 permitted uses are citywide public uses by right, cultural, recreation, health facilities, institutional facilities, temporary classrooms, church synagogue, health care clinic. Conditional uses are citywide uses by conditional use permit, utility facilities, parking lot, and commercial assembly. Is the next door or two over, is that P1? Yeah. Uh, well, I can't go back now. The property, all the property to the, to the east is, is rezone P1 because that's that big uh, nursing home, residential care facility there. And it's been there for, there's one piece of, piece of property between the two that will remain A1 because it came into the city as A1 and it's not included. And there's some property on this track to the north of it that's not being rezoned to P1. They really are just rezoning what they think they're gonna need for the residential care facility. Any other questions or comments? Anyone in the room? All right, I'll call for the vote. Carry six zero. Move merch clause bid up. Second. All right, we have a motion a second for the emergency clause. Call for the vote. Carry six zero. The next item is a request for a conditional use at 107 North, North Old Missouri Road. Uh, it is for a mobile vending unit in a C2 district. There was one there previously, and this is changing to a different owner and a different mo uh, mobile vending. Planning Commission recommends approval of this conditional use with the following conditions. May not operate between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. No obstruction of public of parking spaces required for the operation of any other use on the site. Maintain on site a minimum of three parking spaces designed for their use. If a health certificate is required, display the health certificate in a manner visible to customers. No obstruction of pedestrian or motor vehicle traffic flow. No obstruction of traffic signals or regulatory signs. No vending upon a public street. No sound devices that produces a loud and raucous noise in violation of the city ordinance or violate any other city ordinances in connection with the vending operation. Keep the vending sites clean and free of paper or refuge of any kind generated from the operation of the business. All trash or debris accumulating within 20 feet of any vending stand, col stand collect and deposit into a trash container. Did you read the title? I, I did. Are these, I run it all together when I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Are these conditions basically the same as the they're previous? The, they're the same standards for any time we have a vending machine, I mean a mobile truck. The only times there would be something different is if they are hooking it to power or in, and we've already taken care of all that okay. stuff at that site. So. Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion the resolution pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion second to approve the resolution. Other questions or comments? Is there anyone in the audience that needs to speak to this? All right, let's call for the vote. Carry six zero. The next item is a conditional use request for a use unit 28, which is a home occupation in a uh, SF2 district. Uh, it's at 3250 Laurel Springs, at Laurel Spring. Um, 
It is for a lady who operates a knitting operation. Uh, Planning Commission recommends approval of this home occupation with the following conditions. No alteration of the outside appearance of the residential structure or provision of any separate outside entrance for the business areas of the residential structure. No outside storage of materials required for the operation of the business. Operated only by the resident members of the household and now shall not have any employees, concierge, or any other form of operator or helper, whether such business is conducted on the premises or off the premises. Requires the use of an area no greater than 30% of the total heated living space of the residential structure. Generates no traffic, parking, and sewage or water use in excess of what is normal in the residential neighborhood. Will not produce any fumes, odors, noise, or any other offensive effects that are not normal to residential activity. Will not involve accessory buildings, stock and trade not to exceed 10% of the floor area of the accessory use, and will not provide medical treatment. I don't think I read the title of this one, though. A resolution authoring is a condition used for Diana Ricketts of Magic Hour Knits at 3250 Laurel Spring, a single-family dwelling set forth in the ordinance number 4030. And that conditional use can't be transferred to anybody else. So this is basically just somebody dropping off something and picking up something and going on, right? So, uh, condition number one, no alteration of the outside appearance of the residence. Um, would that prevent any kind of signage? Yeah, it can't have any signs at all. Usually that means is you've put closing the garage and you put in an extra door. That's what we usually look for. You put in an extra door on the side of the garage or something like that. That's usually the physical alterations that we're talking about. Not a sign. Can't put up a sign as a home Well, occupation. but you act like that's just understood, but I don't see that in there anywhere. About no signs. Okay, it's in the ordinance itself. I don't know. Yeah. We it's, did talk about that. You can't have a sign. It, it's in the home occupation mm -hmm. regulations. Move the resolution be adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any other questions or comments? Anyone? All right, call for the vote. Carry six zero. The next item is a conditional use for a use unit 45 healthcare facility to be located at 109 Spring Street. The downtime form based code lists a medical office as having to be a conditional use as opposed to a regular office. And so this is the second one. Planning Commission recommends <clears throat> approval of this condition or use with only two conditions. There are no treatment provided on an outpatient basis and no overnight lodging. And um, the title of the ordinance or the resolution reads, a resolution approving a conditional use for Lonnie Harris of essential pelvic therapy and wellness at 109 Spring Street as set forth in ordinance number 4030. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Other questions or comments? Anyone in the audience or council? All right, a call for the vote. Carry 6 0. The next item is a request for waiver of street improvements on North 56th Street in conjunction, conjunction with a non-large scale development for JSCT Holdings. Um, this is a residential structure that was converted to office use. Planning Commission recommends approval of the waiver. Um, the title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and street lights set forth in ordinance number 3725 to JSCT Holdings in connection with N2411, a non-large scale development. This is due to um, us going to be doing work on 56. Right. And this is, Ben, is this actually in the roundabout? It's really close to it. Yeah, I, it's it's in that area that where the street improvements with the North 56th Street improvements in County Line are being done. Yeah. 
Move the resolution be adopted. <coughs> Option one. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from anyone? All right, call for the vote. Carry six zero. The next item is another request for a waiver of street improvements in conjunction with the large scale at Mercy and Grace Cathedral in at uh, the street address actually has a street address on Apple. Um, the master street plan shows an extension in that street on that site. To date, we don't have it, the center line set. They are donating their half of the right of way as if the street were on the center line, but they're requesting not to have to do any street improvements. Um, Planning Commission recommends approval of option one. The title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a waiver of streets, improvements, drainage, curbs, gutter and sidewalks, and street lights is set forth in ordinance number 3725 to Mercy and Grace Cathedral in connection with L2407, a large scale development. The resolution passed with option one. Second. Motion is second to approve with option one. Other questions or comments? Anyone? All right, call for the vote. Carry six zero and one. All right, thank you, Patsy. Uh, item 10, and I'm gonna turn this over to our city attorney, Ernest Kate. Thank you, Mayor. This is an appeal of a, a denial of a variance request for property located at 21 85, 2247, and 2303 Worth Lane. The applicant uh, requested a waiver of paving for heavy equipment storage, uh, which is a, technically allowed under ordinance. Uh, it's zone C2, but there are certain conditions that have to be met. At any rate, it was denied by the Planning Commission on August the 6th. Patsy, do you know what the vote was? They did file a timely appeal. It was placed on the city council agenda for September 10th. They request to be tabled to September 25th. They did so and they re-notified all the uh, adjacent property owners of the new hearing date and they provided proof of that. So I, I've got a aerial, in addition to what you have in your packet, I've got an aerial photo and a, because there's a, there's a diagram in the packet, but I don't know if there's an aerial photo of it. You guys bring that up? I've got it with the vote seven to one. Seven, seven to one, one against. Okay. If that'll go to my I, I I put some pictures in here so we would have it too. This is the location that's highlighted. This is the approved uh, plan set, and this is what they want the modification to put uh, material storage in the back. Heavy equipment, for one thing. Okay, so we're talking about this is going to, uh, they would like it to be graveled. Yeah, come on up if uh, I think council's ready to hear. Thank you. I'm yeah. Matt Trulove. Uh, I own the property here and then uh, back on the aerial, I own the property to the east and have had for some years. Can, can you all put the aerial back up? And then we can go back to this if, if anybody needs to see this. I just wanted to see what was around it a little better. Yes, sir. So uh, the property of the East, I've had that for, I don't know, seven or eight years. I've ran a construction business out of there. I'm in the excavation business. So a few years ago, um, bought the lots there to the west of me and, and looked to do a development. And I think the core of this issue is there has seemed to be an issue with outdoor storage on it from the beginning. And frankly, outdoor storage is really why I did this project. Um, I put a few folders together. I don't, is it okay to hand those out of some pictures that I've done? Sure, just, you bet. Just... 
so I drove around, uh, frankly, after my denial and took those pictures and went around again today and those properties still look like they were then. But properties like that are why I thought this project was a good idea. You know, as you drive around, a lot of this flex warehouse space, it's meant for, you know, an office or two and then a shop bay for somebody to run their business out of. People are building them with no storage capacity anywhere and this is what ends up happening. And so I uh, met with Ms. Christie about this a while back and you know, her statement was that uh, enforcement was not you know, under her control and that's very understandable. But I think the reality is these businesses come in, they don't have a place to put it. This is what it ends up looking like. And so we put overhead doors on the front of our buildings and the back to where a contractor or anyone could drive through and use the storage that's behind the building, outside the public view, away from the street. And it has just seemed to be an issue from day one. Um, Ms. Christie has stated that she was told there would not be any storage back there. I did not make that statement to her th that I recall. Frankly, I, ESI has dealt with them more than I have. I'm not saying that they didn't. But from my understanding, when we apply for these, we provide elevations of the building. So those elevations would have very clearly shown an overhead door on the front and an overhead door on the back. If we weren't gonna do storage, I could have made these buildings bigger. I could have had more rentable square footage. So again, really all I have to say is those pictures are why I thought this project was a good idea and it still exists today. Um, they haven't leased up as well as I thought. I sold my, uh, I had advanced diesel of Northwest Arkansas operating outside of that building as well. I sold that business a few months ago. I've downsized my construction company, so I'm actually moving my business into one of these spaces. And so I have leased 100% of that property to the east to, to another party. So I am looking for a place to store my excavators, to store my bulldozers. So kind of a double-sided coin here, but um, frankly, they haven't leased up. I'd like to use it for something on, on the time being. I'm hoping that we get them leased. I, not everybody wants storage, not everybody needs storage. But I stand today saying, is it better to have them to have a place to do it on gravel or not? Or five years later, the pictures that I showed you is ultimately what ends up happening. So I'll answer any questions, but that's really all I have. So, so you're wanting to store what we're seeing on these pictures or you're wanting to store tracked heavy equipment? So I, I was directed if I was going to ask for a variance to ask for it all. So that is what we did. I was told by a, a member of staff, Jason Apple was present in that meeting. If you're going to ask for it, ask for the whole thing. So that's what we did. I'm only occupying a piece of that and that's what I need for, for my business. Um, so I'd be willing to modify that request. But the instructions that we were given is if you're going to ask for it, you might as well ask for the whole thing. I will admit I think the process has been difficult because, you know, a lot of the times when these buildings are built, um, you know, you're just going and you're building a shell and then somebody comes and they're this business or that business, everybody has a different need. And so it's a lot of times just an interior finish out. The one thing about this product is uh, we did, we had a, a dog facility that wanted to come in, worked good for them. They rented three bays, they put kennels in, they have an outdoor yard area behind the building it, you know it works very well for that use which is you know this this building i think allows a lot of small businesses to be able to afford to go somewhere you know they cannot go build that standalone building in springdale and that business work you know and so i will admit i think the, with the outside changing with the inside we're having to go to them on every tenant and that process has been difficult um reading the the uh, comments from the planning and zoning meeting, you know, they showed how many variances we've requested. We've asked for several parking variances. I, I'm not going to deny that. I wish this thing was full of trades and services. I, I have to pay ESI to come ask for a variance. I got to pay for them to come here. I got to, you know, we tried to fill it with what we thought at first. At this point, I'm 40% full after having it on the market for about 16 months now. And if someone comes to me, I'm going to ask. I, you know, quite frankly, the bank payment hasn't stopped. And, uh, you know, if the variance is denied, it's denied. But we feel like we have basis in everything that we've asked for. And we've turned down a lot of tenants that someone wanted to put a 
a physician's office in there, and I knew that that wasn't going to work. So we have vetted that some, and I think it's being painted as if we're just completely trying to, you know, ignore that, and it's simply not the case. But if there's a use that can work, I'm not going to deny a tenant uh, at this point. So. Mm -hmm. so can I ask you a question, Patsy? Sure. I'm a little confused by this whole process. Um, is the only thing that they're asking to do is to be able to just leave that gravel back there, or and, and we're saying it has to be paved, or, or well, are they we're asking? We're kind of for, mixing two things together. Okay, yeah, explain that, please. Because it came in. This is the plan that came in. It was shown to be green space on the back, so it was approved that way. The question was asked at the meeting because you're putting doors that you drive through, are you gonna use anything in the back? And the answer was, well, we don't we don't think so, but they didn't put anything on there. When was this plan, What, what why were a, they submitting a plan in the first place? Aren't those, hadn't those buildings been there for a while? No, this this started in 22. So you're talking about a plan that came in 2022. Right. it was approved in 22. Like that. that. Showed, exactly, exactly. Okay, so outside storage has to be paved and screened. It has the screen. It's not a question of whether or not they could park heavy equipment back there. It's the question of not whether it has to be paved. Well, uh, let's back up. If they're storing materials and parking vehicles back there, it has to be paved. Okay. I guess do, define if they're doing, if they're doing heavy equipment, it's a different kind of thing because you're not going to drive heavy equipment through those buildings. That's not going to happen. So it's got to have an access from the back to put heavy equipment back there because, uh, there's no place to get in there without tearing it up. One of the requirements for the for a heavy equipment storage area in a anything other than an industrial zone is to make sure that you have access that the streets are not going to be torn up. But what are we being asked to vote on to just allow a gravel area or to allow heavy equipment? Well, parking? they're asking for both. They want the entire area back there to be gravel, and then they want the ability to store heavy equipment. In that one area, I think where it says truck equipment and material storage, that's the heavy equipment area. Or on, do you intend to put it in? I mean, I, I haven't seen the layout to see how much heavy equipment they can get back there. On the heavy equipment uh -huh. question, though, there have been times that we have given variances right. because it's heavy equipment right. that, the, that could tear up the asphalt. Right. But okay. usually you have access to it from some way to get to okay. it. So They're talking about bringing access from the back, which means they got to have an access easement across. And I, I know he, he owns the property next door, but he may not own the property next door forever and needs an access easement across to bring heavy equipment across that property to get to the back. Heavy equipment storage also is restricted to an area less than a uh, half acre, so not all of it could be used and it has to have the ability to get there without tearing something up, so it has to come off the back. Now, this, but this process has already gone through several renditions we've had. I don't think it was built exactly like the plans because there were some elevation changes when it was built. We had to make changes for the handicapped spaces because they needed some ramps. Um, the first building, I think you put all that parking on the end because it's a a dance studio which took up the additional parking and they've got some parking agreements for two um, shared parking. Do we get both of them or just one? Shared parking, yeah, from the place across the street. We're getting to the maximum of what they can have shared parking too. Ernest, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say kind of the premise of your question, heavy equipment storage is limited to a C6 zone or an industrial zoning district unless a variance is obtained. Right. So that's the premise for the, for the variance to begin with, is he can't have, it, and because this property is on C2, so he can't have heavy equipment storage because he's not zoned C6 or industrial district, so he's got to get a variance to even have it there in the first place. So that's a variance? And that's the variance that was denied. Right, and then there's also in the ordinance uh, that addresses what, what kind of, materials can be used to, to, to store it. But, but there are 14 separate requirements that go with this variance that he's asking for. The first one is 
that the equipment and storage area may not exceed one half acre in size where all vehicles shall be stored. My, by my calculations, if you include the green area, it's three quarters of an acre. If you take the green area out, it's, it's, it's over a quarter, it's over a half an acre by like 300 square feet. So you said he had to have an easement to move prop something from his own property to his own property? Uh, if you're accessing a property from another property, doesn't matter if you own both of them, if that property sells, that easement's gotta be there because you're saying we're giving him the use of that property and if it changes hands, how will we know that it's changed hands? Not everything comes to the city when it changes hands. The other thing about the dog place there, we were never told they were gonna have outside runs. They were approved to have indoor kennels. The next thing we find, there's gravel out there with turf on top of it. And a C2 doesn't allow to have outside runs, so we got a problem with that one too. So. If I, mean, I may on the, on the equipment, I, I have to disagree that I, there's a bulldozer that would absolutely be able to drive through that building. It can be unloaded on private property and track through that building. I plan on accessing it, accessing it from my other property, but I absolutely think that someone could, they're not gonna be unloading it in the city street and tracking it, uh, you know, across. It's not, that's not how that works. Um, I make a motion the appeal be approved. Can you clarify? Yeah. To overturn the planning commission. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Other comments or questions? Yes. Go ahead. Some of these pages, I'm still a little confused. Um, page 60 of 104, uh, I think it, on the red numbers, it's page 55, so I don't know if you can find that or not. It's a, it's a letter from... Uh, So it talks about, you've got it. It talks about uh, your variance request for commercial design standards, A, parking lot orientation, B, pedestrian flows, central C, central features and community spaces, D, detailed features, E, roofs and deviation. Are they asking for variances on all of that or? That, that's from 2022. Oh, okay. Why is that even in here? It's just the status of the project from the beginning. We kind of keep track of where we are with each project as we go through. Yeah, that letter's dated February of 22. I see now. Yeah, okay. Huh. Could, could you go back over one more time, Ernest, what it is that they're asking for a variance on? They're asking for a variance to be able to store heavy equipment in a C2 zone, which if it's not C6 or industrial zoning district requires a variance, and this is zone C2. And there are, like I said, 14 different uh, requirements that go along with, with the variance, the first one of which is it can't be more than a half acre, and this is more than a half so acre. So if we, if we overturn the Planning Commission, all of those 14 things would have to be met? They would be granted. The variance is on all fourteen. It says heavy equipment storage in areas other than an industrial zoning district or a C six large product retail sales district area by variance granted by the Planning Commission as follows, and then it lists those 14 items. So to me, those are part and parcel of a variance that's subject to these 14. I think so, yeah. If, for example, all vehicles shall be screened from direct view through vegetation or approved fencing or walls or other approved means. 
Uh, first one is equipment storage area may not exceed one half acre in size where all vehicles shall be. So stored. if we grant the variance then to allow it in C2, does he have does it does the size of the property still have to take place? And the screening still have to take place? I'm not following you on that either. Well, because the way I read the ordinance, it says this is the section of the zoning ordinance that deals with parking, paving. It's a Article 7 of the zoning ordinance, P particularly Section 8.3, surface and drainage. It talks about off-street parking areas shall be surfaced as follows. And it goes through various different things, like they can have uh, gravel areas for heavy equipment, so on and so forth. However, subsection F says, as I mentioned, as I said before, heavy equipment storage in areas other than industrial zone district or C6 requires a variance as follows, 1 through 14. So does that mean? He's C2. Well, it can get the variance to, to allow it in a C2, but Correct. you have to meet all of these 14 that's conditions. That's to, you have to meet all these 14 conditions. That's the way, that's the way you, I read it. You didn't read it that way, Mike? You were shaking your head no. Uh, after, after his second, second reading, first I was... Uh, I was under the impression if we granted this this variance that they would get a waiver uh, of those 14 requirements. But if if what we're doing is we're going to grant a waiver to allow parking of heavy equipment in a zone that's only uh, approved in two zones, C6 or industrial, then all we're doing is approving the parking of that. And in order for that to happen, then... The, then the, individ, the individual requirements as outlined would have to be adhered to. Otherwise, the variance... Do you agree with that, apply. Patsy? So let's just assume, and I, I don't know where we're going to get thumbs up or thumbs down on this appeal, but let's just assume for a minute that he got his variance. Is he capable of meeting all those 14 conditions size-wise and all that other stuff? That's why he's getting a variance. Uh, no, the, var the variance is, is... For parking only. Yeah, the variance is because by virtue of the fact that the property is zoned C2, he cannot store heavy equipment there, period. Right. And the ordinance contemplates that outside of a C6 or industrial zone, heavy equipment storage, can there can be a va variance granted for it and it so says as, yeah, and it says as follows, and it lists the items one through 14 that are included in that. In other words, if we give you permission to store heavy equipment in a C2, it's going to be subject to these restrictions. Which, which basically are the same restrictions that are required in a C6 or industrial. And we haven't got into them yet because it got denied, so I haven't gone through all the details yet. Okay. So what happens if... Again, he gets a thumbs up on his request for variance, and uh, he cannot comply with one of those 14 things. Then the variance is not. You get a variance on those. Individual. Well, but he's already got his variance to allow the parking. But how, how are you going to enforce that, I guess, is what I'm asking, Ernest. It's subject to those 14 requirements. How do you enforce that? that? Well, that's... That he has to get approved by the planning uh, department and inspection department. I, I would say it would be a code violation. So it's it, inspection. It says as follow, granted a variance as follows, and it's 14 items listed. In other words, you're giving it to someone, not a C6 or industrial, subject to these conditions. The way I read it. The, the way I look at this is. The way I look at this is he owns all the land behind it. He's not going to drive heavy equipment across it if he sells it because he's selling it. And so he's not going to come in from the backside to park there if he doesn't own that property. So if either one of them sells, that heavy equipment is probably not going to be here. That's what I think your concern was. But the is not granted if the property is sold to somebody else. Originally when you came to me, you said you sold the property and you needed to be able to go across it. 
I said I sold the business. I, I, okay. I, I, I think we had a misunderstanding because when you said you sold the business, I thought you meant the land and everything to it. Is a variance like a conditional use where um, it's only granted to that particular person or would it be a variance no, on that property from now on? It's and granted for that property now on. If it sells to somebody else, the variance is still there. Oh, I'm sorry. I always thought I was loud enough. <laughs> Didn't disappoint you, though, did I? <laughs> I mean, the variance is granted to that project at that location, and it transfers with it unless you tell them they have the variance for a couple of years, and if they continue to do it after that, something like that. But we've never done a variance with conditions. It either is a variance or it's not. Except the way this ordinance reads, it sounds to me like it's a variance with conditions. Well, that's true. But that's, that's what you have to do if you want to do heavy equipment storage in here, and that's why you added the, the variance for it. And did you understand all that, Mr. Trulove? Did you understand all that, that you have to comply with all those 14 things? No, sir. Yeah, that's, that's what I was afraid of as well. Well, do you want us to go back and look at it and see if you can meet with all this before we ask them to, to work on it or not? That's what we would have done at, at planning commission meeting if the variance had been granted. He would have told to come in and see if we can comply with all this stuff. I may have a brain fog, but will you just help me understand if we're talking about parking, storage of equipment, heavy, heavy equipment? That's what they asked for. Okay. Where does the paving requirement come in? Because that's what's on our well, the that's what's on our title. The application itself, they're asking for a variance to allow heavy equipment to be stored at these locations. That's the variance request itself. You can have storage outside and it be paved and store any kind of material that you want to out there. And I assume if we give them a variance to, to allow it to have be gravel, they can park anything out there. It's just confusing to me how, confusing. This is, how this is written on the agenda. Uh, an, uh, variance request from the paving requirement. I have the variance request application. You should have got that in your packet because we usually submit all that information with the packet of the variance requests that we got. You got the minutes from the planning commission meeting. All that stuff goes into a variance appeal. It says, variance to allow gravel parked for tracked construction equipment. Difficulty or hardship, ordinance allows that for this by requesting a variance where tracked construction equipment will be stored parked that would destroy asphalt pavement. The effect would allow construction-oriented tenant to park their equipment. Well, what were you reading from? That is the variance application. And that, that encapsulates the ordinance that I read with those 14 conditions. That's in there? That, in, that basically what he said it encapsulates that, you know, you can't store heavy equipment in a C2 unless you get a variance as follows. I think you saw it. But. Well, we have a motion to second right now. To overturn the variance or to to overturn the planning commission's denial of the variance are there other questions or comments i think where maybe some of the semantics are getting lost is that the variance is for to allow construction of a gravel area for heavy equipment storage but drilling down it's really to allow it in the first place if that makes any sense not yeah. just the gravel because correct. it's in because it's not in the correct zone. That's correct, and actually that that is correct. And and actually, in his appeal letter, he cites the correct code section, the one we've been talking about. He it's in his he appeal letter. Right. Yeah, it's in his appeal letter. It says to allow for heavy equipment storage in areas other than industrial or C he quotes from the the ordinance in his appeal letter. Patsy, if this is denied, or if the, if the if the if the decision is not overturned, what options 
will Matt have to? I mean, I, he can't apply for the same variance for a year. Okay. If he brings back an alteration, the planning commission has to agree that it's a enough of an alteration to consider hearing it again. The reason I bring that up is because you mentioned that maybe we could look at these 14 and see if there's any way those could be met. Well, I, that's really their responsibility to see if they can meet them or not. But if they wanted to come back and narrow it down to a smaller area, the planning commission would have to determine whether that is enough of a change in the okay. various requests okay. to allow that it to be Okay, that gets to my question. Again. Okay. Yeah. Could it, that, could, that could be enough of a change where he wouldn't have to wait the year. It's possible, could be. yes. Could the planning be. commission would have to make that determination. Well, yeah. what's, what's the downside, Patsy, to allowing uh, heavy equipment to be parked on the east side of these buildings? What, what's the downside here? Well, it's a very small lot. It's in a commercial area, not really an industrial area. Um, to me, it's an access issue. They're gonna drive those big pieces of equipment through those buildings and put them out there or access it off of another piece of property. And I know he owns both of them today, but if he doesn't, how do we, how do we track that? You know, that, that's a problem as far as that's concerned. And we have rules for commercial areas and we have rules for industrial areas and this is not really an industrial area. Now, why, why does it matter that we track him going across his property? If he sells it, he won't have access anymore unless he has an easement, correct? Well, unless the next person thinks they're buying it with the ability to do that. Um, not always is real estate agents and others tell all the details until somebody gets cited for Right, driving across somebody's property they didn't have an, an easement on. And trust me, I only say that because we see that. That's I just, happens. I just feel like we're starting to become hard to do business with for our businesses. And, you know, we, we turned down a, a, a company that is doing roofing on the other side of town. And I feel like, you know, that was an established business that's doing business. And we made it more difficult for them. So that's well, that's what I'm worried about. I have to argue about that when he moved into his zone knowing it wasn't zoned for that to start with. Yeah. That's the same situation here. This wasn't designed for a heavy equipment operation. It was designed for trades and services. That's usually plumbers and air conditioning people and, and builders and stuff that don't have heavy equipment to go in there. Uh, you know, we were, those things were discussed if at the very beginning. And those, once you limit parking to those things, that's all you can do. If he wanted to, his other option would be to try and rezone to C6. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Then he could store heavy equipment there. And then he can sell cars on there too, as a permitted use. Yep. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying. That's another option. Yes. Under, after a quick review, I think we're comfortable with all the 14 items as it, as it applies. But, uh, Mr. Rush, the SI's reviewed them. He feels okay. comfortable we can do it. So. Everybody figure that into your gray matter before we vote. <laughs> all right. Any other questions or comments? The motion, uh, Randall's motion is to overturn the denial of the Planning Commission, thereby granting the variance. Okay, and we have a second. Uh, any other comments or questions? Okay, call for the vote. Uh, the vote. Oh, it's only three, so I can't vote. Correct. The votes three to three requires five votes to pass, so the planning commission's decision is upheld. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Will... Yeah. Mia, you ready? Sorry. Yes. Yes, sir. I'll open up finance committee. Um, we have just two items on the agenda. Um, both are resolutions um, for new positions. Item A is a resolution authorizing the creation of a new position, deputy city clerk, and both of these will be presented by Colby Fulfer, Chief of Staff. Thank you, Amelia. Um, as y'all know, we uh, Denise has been serving the city for over 40 years now. <clears throat> She's made the decision to retire, which put us in a little bit of a 
pickle. And so uh, we were hoping there would be somebody interested in that job. Uh, and we're lucky to have Sabre Jeff, who is here with us tonight, who is going to be running for city clerk unopposed. Um, we've discussed it with her. We brought up the option of her coming and working with Denise the last few months out of this year, October 1st through December 31st, to do some on-the-job training with her. Uh, there's a lot of institutional knowledge that is about to leave that city clerk's office, and we feel like it's in our best interest for succession planning purposes to have her go ahead and join our staff as a deputy city clerk. Uh, this position will sunset on December 31st. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Any other comments or questions? Anyone? All right. Call for the vote. Carry six zero. And the next resolution is a similar resolution creating a new position uh, for uh, a Springdale Chief Deputy City Attorney. As y'all know, Taylor Samples was elected to become the next district judge. Uh, Ernest is going to be restructuring his department. Instead of having a senior deputy city attorney, he would rather uh, change those positions uh, to have three deputy attorneys. So. Uh, this would be a position that trains with Taylor samples through the end of the year, uh, but instead of continuing as a senior deputy attorney, it will just be a deputy attorney position. Yeah, so that, thank you, Colby. So the chief deputy position will, would sunset at the end of the year yep. to dovetail the other resolution. Move the resolution be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion a second to adopt the resolution. Any other questions or comments? I'll call for the vote. Carry six zero. All right, thank you. Item 12, Health, Sanitation, and Property Maintenance Committee. Chairman Jeff Watson. Jeff. So uh, the Health, Education, and Property Maintenance Committee met again to consider uh, property located 215 West Maple Avenue. And um, this in at the time of discussion, this included the house um, that's at the front or the uh, north side of the pro uh, property that the owner had uh, requested a building permit on and was granted a building permit. And so this action that we took at the committee was not in reference to the house, but it had to do with the structure south of the house uh, that has from time to time been called the candy shop. I'm not sure why, maybe Tom can tell us that. But, um, and, and these two structures have been handled <clears throat> separately. The house is one issue and the candy shop structure and the back uh, was handled as a separate uh, uh, issue. And the, the candy shop, uh, it was, the city's uh, position that the candy shop in the back was uh, not structurally sound and there was not a building permit requested on that. There's been no indication of any work being done on that and we've been dealing with this issue for quite some time. So the committee requested um, the city attorney to, pro to bring forward an ordinance tonight uh, for the raising of the candy shop, the structure on the south side of the house um, because of its dilapidated condition and lack of uh, any progress <coughs> to bring it uh, to a good condition. And so that's the ordinance that's before us tonight. I'll read the title to the ordinance, an ordinance ordering the raising, demolition, and removal of a certain structure within the city of Springdale Arkansas, located at 215 West Maple Avenue, and to declare an emergency. That, uh, I'm not sure how we voted on that, but it was the general consensus of the committee to bring that ordinance forward tonight. Do you have anything to add on that, Ernest or Tom? No, nope. it's the, uh, yeah, I would call it the accessory structure. But, accessory. but yes, everything, everything else, yes. 
I didn't put candy shop in the ordinance. Candy. I'll make a motion. The ordinance pass. Second. Yeah. Okay. We got a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. Yeah, certainly. We'll, we're going to open it up now for comment. Okay. okay. Go right ahead. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Hall Frost. Again, I represent the Hollises in this matter. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak this evening, first off. Um, I'm here to encourage you not to pass this ordinance. Uh, at the end of the day, this rock house or the candy shop, if you will, um, it has a lot of historic and sentimental and family value uh, to the Hollises. And I'd like to talk about that just briefly uh, as you consider your vote on this proposed ordinance tonight. Um, first off, this, this uh, rock house um, has been on the property uh, as long as the, as the Hollises can remember. Uh, they, Mr. Hollis, uh, Tim Hollis, purchased, um, or his father uh, purchased the property back in 1961. Um, and multiple generations of his family have, have grown up um, with this rock house uh, out back. Um, later this afternoon, uh, Mr. Hollis, uh, or Ms. Ho Mrs. Hollis rather, uh, shared multiple photos of the family uh, through the years, uh, standing in front of the rock house, uh, Mr. Hollis as a kid, along with his siblings and his parents. So there's a lot of, a lot of memories with the family there um, with this house, in addition to the, the historic home there at 215 West Maple that they've been working on. Um, this rock house is just as much a part of uh, the family home. Uh, there's just a, as much a part of the home um, as the home itself. Um, it's been on the property for at least 110 years that we know of. Um, and I'll, I'll spare the council uh, the history lesson on this, uh, or the full history lesson, if you will. But uh, in the 1914, uh, I believe it's called the, uh, the, uh, well, uh, the Sanborn Fire Insurance Maps, uh, this... Uh, Fire insurance uh, group put together these maps of different uh, buildings and structures throughout the U.S. and indicated, you know, they, they through these maps were able to uh, identify different fire risks and things like that as they were uh, writing policies. So you see this uh, rock house or candy shop, if you will, show up as early as 1914. And Mr. Hollis speculates it was probably there long before 1914. But in any event, that was the first time it showed up. In that map, it was labeled uh, as a stable. Uh, however, if you fast forward to 1948, a uh, subsequent map shows it as a candy shop or a candy factory. So that's why it's uh, often referred to as the candy shop. Um, so uh, that, that's where it gets his name. So all that to say, there's a lot of history with this house. Uh, all the Hollises remember this house for, or this rock house specifically for as long as they can remember. Um, and to that end, they'd like to preserve it in addition to um, the, the house there at 215 West Maple. So in an effort to do that, they met with their contractor, Eric Hansen, who, who's been remodeling and working on the, the house at 215 for some time. Um, and he put together a plan um, and kind of a timeline uh, for that rock house or the candy shop. And altogether, he estimates it'll take about four months to bring it up to code, uh, to sure up uh, the, ha the, the roof, uh, the structure, uh, to restore proper electricity to it. Um, and to, to pour a new concrete floor. Um, so it's for all these reasons that uh, my clients are respectfully requesting that the council vote no on this uh, raising ordinance this evening. Thanks. Any questions? Well, I'm a, I like the historical references and all that, but what are the plans? I mean, we need it cleaned up. That's why we're, we're doing this. Like, we need it structurally sound. We need it yeah, absolutely. cleaned up all around right. the property. That's what we're looking for. Uh, and that's why this has been brought before because we need it cleaned up. I'm, I drove by today and the fence is still up in the front. I figured that would be done by now. You know, we, we've talked about it in two meetings, maybe three meetings, you know, and it's still there. Mm -hmm. So help me out here. Yeah, no, as, as, far as, as far as the fence goes, we met with, uh, with Mr. Kate, Mr. Evers uh, last week, I believe, and the discussion was either to move the fence back to the front facing of the house or to apply for a variance. And my clients are intending to apply for a variance um, by the, the next uh, uh, planning commission meeting uh, deadline to, to install a, a permanent fence there that would be at a, at a higher height than what's currently allowed. Um, it's my understanding that we'd be able to, to table the fence issue as long as they apply for a variance by the, the deadline for the next planning commission meeting. So that's the, my client's intentions right now. What are your intentions on the candy shop, the accessory dwelling? Yes, so, so like I said, it'd be four months uh, to restore it, to make it structurally sound. Uh, that would include stabilization work, framing work, uh, restoring proper electricity, pouring a new concrete floor, obviously before all that, gutting all the debris and whatever's in there right now. 
Um, but that, that's uh, their contractor's plan to, to restore um, and to make it structurally sound. Will this take away from the main project of the main house? Do, I, I'm sorry? This t take away from the project, the main house, working, working on the candy shop, will the, will the contractor be able to do both projects at once because we, we need to move along on yes, the Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the intention is to work on both at the same time. See, I guess, I, and I appreciate you, uh, what you brought forward for the family, and, and uh, but, boy, we've been dealing with this a long time. Sure. And this is a, it, you know, I understand this is a, I, I, I agree, it's a historic structure, and it's, but, doggone, this stuff could have been going on years ago, and here we are, and the council's, Attitude. I, I can't. I'm not going to speak for the council, but it's kind of a hard pill to swallow that all this is going to happen now. I, I'll follow up with that, Mayor. <clears throat> the the deal that it, it takes four months and it seems awful easy. We're six, seven years into this, and if there's such a sentimental value to the Hollises, I don't know why they hadn't done it by now. I just don't get that. Um, I said it before and I'll say it again, what this property has looked like to that neighborhood and those adjacent property owners, it, it would have drove me crazy to live around that. It's not fair to them, it's not fair to the city, it's not fair to the taxpayers. But if this is such an easy job, for the life of me, I don't know why it hadn't been done by now. I'm happy to take any other questions. Uh, Mrs. Hollis is here this evening. Three of her four children are here, and, and one of them would like to speak at this time. So a name and address for the council, and, and go ahead. Oh, hello. My name is Hillary Hollis, and I live at two, um, 28, oh, no, it was 28110 North Miles View, Fayetteville. That's where my parents are residing right now. But I would just like to say that it was not clear to us at all that the rock building, the rock structure behind the house, that there was any citation or problem with it. Years ago, it was the, there was a structure that was adjacent to it, a garage that was red tagged. We demolished that part of the building and another part that was an addition on the east side. We demolished those, I believe it was 2020. I remember cleaning it out before demolition in 2020. And we had not had any correspondence from the city that there was any other problem with it. We were not aware that it was structurally unsound. And whenever there was a raise notice put on the property um, in June or July, I don't remember which one it was, my mother knows. But it was not specified to us that the rock building was the structure in question. And my parents and Eric Hansen, their contractor, took the building instructor and some code um, enforcement officers to inspect the building some two weeks ago or so. And their understanding was not they were not given the understanding that there was anything wrong with the rock house. They were given some code violations in the lot of things to clean up, which they complied with. And so I strongly object that you're voting on this when they were not given proper 30 days notice specifically about this building. Thank you. Tom, do you have anything with some timelines that can remind the council? Yeah, on this property back in 2018, I sent a letter to the house, the, the main house 215 individually. I sent one to the garage accessory structure candy shop individually. I sent one to the one of the two houses in the back that a tree had fallen over and they they were received. They knew about them. They did get a demo permit to tear down one of the structures in the very far back. It's gone. I mean, I don't know how cleaned it up it is, but the structure is gone. They did start to tear down some things on the candy building, but they were, again, never got a permit to fix it or change anything. Then it was back to, let's work on the house. They had their architects in here and all that, and they got that permitted. They talk about continuing to work on it. I can look over there and tell you it's been years since we've been over there to do any inspections other than the one that I've done with Mr. Halt, you know, with the walkthrough to see what area they were in. So it's been a long time since they've actually done work that's documented by us. Um, 
I appreciate it too. I would love to see their family take pictures for another 110 years. We want compliance. One thing to be careful of what I hear is he says he's trying to get it in four months to its sound. He didn't say done. And we've been working on this house for six years. I, I just want to comment on what Randall said about the fence. What he stated about the fence is correct because we met them on site a couple of weeks ago, Ron and Tom and I. They, they do have the right to apply for a variance, but the deadline had already passed for the October Planning Commission meeting, so they were advised they could apply for, the vari for a variance for the fence height in the front yard if they weren't going to move the fence back where it's supposed to be. So that part's correct. Do we have documents stating that they received notice that this was yeah yeah this this was yes we brought this forward along with the adjoining property on hang on i'll tell you I reached out to the, the attorney's office. They agreed to accept service for the notices. So, yes. I name just want to no, wait, 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 name an address, My please. name's Bethany Hollis. My address is 2810 North Milesy Road in Fayetteville. I just want to reiterate what my sister said. The building inspector is saying he individually tagged the rock house. At the time that this was tagged, what, six years ago, there was multiple additions to that building that have been demolished. The understanding of the family was that satisfied the red tag. As far as we're aware, that property has no red tags on it now. That build, the house on the property is structurally sound. So the idea that there's been 30 days notice on this specific building is completely news to any of us because we are under the impression that years ago, the demolition of the additions that were dilapidated satisfied all concerns about this specific building. And the ordinance that came through this summer on the house referenced a structure, singular. This issue today, if I'm not mistaken, references an exterior building, something like that. It clearly is separate language. So there, it's, it's an entire confusion yeah. from our perspective. And the fact of the fence and all the pro whole project on the whole property, that's not relevant to this one specific issue at issue today. The original notice said structures with a S. And the reason why this was changed to accessory structure in this current ordinance is because I wanted to make it clear we weren't going to touch the existing house that they've been working on that it only applied to the accessory structure, not the front. I just want to say one other thing. I mean, they did come in and get the permit for 215. They haven't called us for anything. Ernest reached out to their attorney about the other property and gave, you know, said, hey, give them a demo permit. It's supposed to start within 10 days. Tomorrow's 10 days. Still haven't. Nothing started. Okay. So. All right. Other comments or questions? Anyone else in the audience need to speak to this? Okay. So we got a motion to second that. Okay. The notice that you're talking Get your about. Your name, please. I'm Glenda Hollis. Okay. The notice that you're talking about. I've looked at it. It does not have an S on it. It is structure, no S. All right. Thank you. Do you, uh, we got one more coming. Go ahead, Randall, if you or, Just do you feel confident that we've done what we need to do for... Mm -hmm. On a notification on from a notification. notification yeah I do I mean I do in fact when I sent the, I was just looking when I sent the notice back in July 
and I also emailed the attorney who had represented them the last time it was in front of the city council, reminding them of here we are again. If you remember, here's what happened. Sent the notice to them, and it 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 pertains to any structure located on the property that could be a danger or uh, unsafe. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, name name and address, please. Zachary Hollis. I live at the same address, and uh, I just had a question about, um, I mean, I'd like to reiterate, like they said, that we were not given proper notification. We don't, this is confusing to us. And uh, does anybody here know what the reason for this particular structure being considered uh, unsafe or What's the reason why? Let's let let's let our building inspector because he's okay. He's inspect that. Let's let him address that because, because it he has not been he made has, aware he has us. given the council information. Mr. Wallace, what what happened is six years ago, it came to our attention that somebody was living in the structure at two fifteen. Your uncle. Okay. He was yeah, living there. That was the main. That's the main house. That's what that's house. what got us started. So six years ago, knowing that. The main house was something that maybe you guys or your dad wanted to save or something like that. That's why I did it individually. I did that individually. I did the garage, as I called it, or the candy house individually. I did the house in the back individually. Maybe this one to save the house. What made it unsafe? He was living there with, he did have running water, no heat. The house was falling in on itself. Um, not allowed to live it like that. We don't let people live without utilities in a house. Period. And so he got a long he got a long list. Just for you. He got a long he got a long list back then. Sixty, seventy items of things to fix. Hey, uh, we, if you're gonna speak and we wanna hear anything you wanna say, please come up to the microphone and y'all take turns because we need to get it all on the record. Once 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 I had access to the property by red tagging the main structure, looking at the other structures. We have ordinances that require houses, to, you know, painting to be done, broken windows to be fixed, roofs to be fixed, you know, whether the tin roof's falling off. All of these things were photographed. I have photographs of all of them and documented, and your father was notified. So I don't know what the confusion is, especially after six years. I don't know what the confusion is. So. Okay, well, So just for clarification, we're yes, talking sir. about this rock structure the behind house, the main the rock house. house. Yes, sir. And like my sister said, this like years ago, we addressed issues that were brought to our attention. As far as I know, we've always complied with specific complaints about the properties that were brought to our attention in the past. I, I, I told you, I, the, the house in the very far back has been demolished with a demo permit. This structure, they had taken some things down, but that's where they stopped. They didn't correct it. You still have wood that's not allowed to be exposed to the elements that's just out there. You still have Mayor, I'd like to call for the to vote. In there, you know, so. All right, we have a call for the vote. Uh, Mr. Overton. We have a call for the vote. At the time he's talking about, the house did not belong to us. It was in probate at that time. And we did not get um, ownership of the house for, I don't remember for how long it was. But at, at that time, the house was in probate. All right, thank you. And, and also, like they're saying, we had taken off the parts that were red tagged, we thought. The garage is gone. In another section of the, that was an addition to this rock building is right. gone. And we thought the red tag was no longer there. We did not know until a week ago that you guys had any problem with the rock building. Okay, thank you, ma'am. This has been this has been like pulling teeth for six years now. 
and uh, the council, and I, I believe rightfully the neighbors have, uh, as has been addressed, have been more than patient, and I'm going to call for the vote, uh, as Mr. Overton already has. You can vote. Carry six zero. Does have an emergency clause? Should you choose to pass it? That's up to. The significance okay. would be that we give them thirty extra days if they were to take it upon themselves to comply this time. All right. If you didn't pass the emergency clause. I make a motion the emergency clause passed. Okay. We do have a motion for an emergency clause. Second. And second. Okay, I'll call for the vote on the emergency clause. Emergency clause fails five to one. It takes six votes. To takes six for an emergency clause. And so, the mayor can't vote on that. so you do have another, six. say that again, another, uh, go, go ahead and make sure they're clear on it, Ernest. Yeah, the ordinance means the ordinance would go into effect in 30 days. The ordinance, by its language, requires them to, to pull a demo permit within 10 days of the effective day of the ordinance and finish within 30. So, in effect, they've got 60 days okay. before the city would come in and do before it. Before the city would do it. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. All right, we'll move on now to uh, Ordinance Committee and Chairman Mike Overton. Mike? Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it, so I think uh, the esteemed uh, Councilman Planner Powell took that job. Thank you, Mike. Um, we had two items come before the Ordinance Committee. Uh, they were both recommend, recommended for approval. <clears throat> the first ordinance, and uh, I'll probably may have to refer to Patsy or Ernest on this. Uh, the first ordinance, if I understand correctly, is expanding the uh, downtown di uh, dining district uh, to the to the east to include the uh, a new Luther George Park. Um, is that correct? What I'm understanding on that? Yeah. And Brian, I, let me say, uh, uh, Jill contacted me this afternoon and had a family function and asked if if uh, and, and I told her she, she was here during committee, and I figured that, that Patsy or, I, or Ernest could probably answer any questions. And we have a map showing the uh, diagram for the uh, limits that's going to be, um, um, that's being proposed to uh, encompass. So I'll read the title of the first ordinance. It is an ordinance amending Chapter 6, Article 3 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Springdale, Arkansas, to amend the Downtown Springdale Outdoor Dining District and declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. The motion is second to adopt the ordinance. Any other questions or comments? Anyone in the audience? Okay, let's call for the vote. Carry six zero. Move the emergency clause be adopted. Second. Motion is second for the emergency clause. Call for the vote. Carry six zero. And the uh, second ordinance is, um, if I'm reading this right, is um, to uh, be able to uh, uh, sell alcoholic beverages as long as it is um, um, granted by the Public Events Advisory Committee uh, on this in the uh, downtown uh, dining district. And uh, huh? It adds Luther George Park to the right. list. Right. Basically, okay. you're, Brian, we're expanding what we do currently at, right. at Walter Turnbow Park and including Luther George. The title of this ordinance is an ordinance amending Chapter 78 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Springdale, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Other questions or comments? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, call for the vote. Carry six zero. The emergency clause be adopted. Motion is second for the emergency clause. Call for the vote. Carry six 
carries six zero. All right, thank you. We'll move on now to item 14, Parks and Recreation Committee. Chair Mike Lawson. Mike. Thank you, Mayor. I too was unable to attend last week. I think Mark took it, but Mark's gone tonight. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I will read it and uh, let Colby answer any questions, but it was passed with uh, recommendation for approval. The resolution reads entering into a contract with Milestone Construction Company for park improvements at Shaw Family Park 2023 bond project number 23 BPP3. Thank you, Councilman Lawson. Uh, this is a, a resolution guaranteeing a maximum price. As you remember, in January, we hired Milestone as a construction manager for this park because they had already previously built this park in the earlier bond program. Uh, we're adding four ball fields. If you'll remember, this park was designed that way. We already did the dirt work, so we were prepping for this at the next bond program. So in the 23 bond, we set aside money for that. Uh, we initially anticipated this project coming in much higher uh, at over $7 million, but it ended up coming in. The guaranteed maximum price is $5.36 million. Uh, so we feel like we've uh, positioned ourselves well. Because of that, it's going to free up about a million and a half dollars in the park bond program that we were not anticipating. So we're trying to make plans for that as well. So that's what this resolution covers. Move the resolution be adopted. Second. second. Motion a second to adopt the resolution. Other questions or comments? Anyone? Okay, call for the vote. Carry six zero. All right, thank you. And uh, Brian, it stays with you, Police and Fire Committee. <clears throat> All right, we uh, looks like we've got a uh, grant coming before us. We had this item come up before the uh, Police and Fire Committee, and it was forwarded with recommendation for approval. Uh, this would allow us to uh, get some much needed equipment for the police department. I'll read the title of the resolution is a resolution accepting a grant from the Justice Assistance Grant JAG program, authorizing the mayor to sign the grant agreement and uh, appropriating funds. And uh, Assistant Chief Derek Hudson's here if you have any questions. I don't have anything to add other than we're just asking for your authorization to uh, accept funds. We get this annually uh, for $28,555 and I can go into the equipment that we're needing if you would like me to, it should be in your packet. This is the drug recognition is that right? It's through the Department of Justice, based yeah. on crime statistics. We receive it annually in conjunction with Fayetteville and Washington County. Yes, yes, sir. This is different. Yes, sir. Move this is a grant, no pass. effect to the budget. Second. Motion to second to approve. Other comments or questions? A call for the vote. Carry six zero. All right. Thank you, Derek. And yeah, the next two go to our city attorney, Ernest. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first one, this is our annual rite of passage. The first one is a resolution to levy Benton County Avalorum taxes of the city of Springdale, Arkansas. Move the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion is second to approve. Comments or questions? Call for the vote. Carry six zero. The next item is a resolution to levy Washington County Avalorum taxes of the city of Springdale, Arkansas. Second. Okay. We have a motion a second to adopt the resolution. Call for the vote. Carry six zero. Thank you, Ernest. We have uh, any comments from department heads? Just a reminder, the next committee meeting will be on the 30th of this month. Next Monday. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Tom? I apologize for interrupting you earlier, but I did want to bring something. Um, it's personal. I know last week I had a medical emergency, and I wanted to let Blake know I appreciate his team coming out there. Um, I don't know what happened, but I just I stopped breathing for a while, and I want to let them know I appreciate it. I let him know that Kissinger is appreciated. Um, Kano with the water department is appreciated. But I said I wanted to go and know. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. We're glad you're up and around. Thank you. All right. Council? Yeah, Mayor, I have two things. This has been my, my week of uh, folks querying me about uh, 
about the city. Number one, uh, do we have plans to do some uh, annexation to the east of the city? Apparently some uh, neighbors have been uh, around Harp Hill, been notified that uh, we're going to be annexing that area into the city. I hadn't heard about it. We haven't sent any notification. Uh, right apparently the Knob Hill Fire Department was notified they wouldn't be getting funds because it'd be going to the it was coming into the city and uh, no. oh okay any conversations we've had are with individual property owners that have approached us and, and uh, I, I, I tried to explain any annexation has to come from the property owners wanting to voluntarily come in unless it's an island unless well unless you, know, you have an election call, if you want to call but we've not we've not done that I'd be happy to feel any phone calls if anyone okay. has questions about that the other thing is I've gotten hit on three streets in Springdale, parking in the grass, Turner, West End, and Holcomb, and I saw all three of them today, and it's uh, it's getting to be a real uh, set of opportunities that we, because uh, I keep hearing from the neighbors all the time, hey, we need to we need to make sure we clean up the the city, and it's not just one, but several uh, several calls. I see our I see Ron nodding, so I'm sure y'all will be on that. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thanks, Mike. Uh, was that it? Anything else? Okay. Anybody else, Council? All right, City Attorney. Believe it or not, I do. Yeah, man, after my own heart about that parking in the grass. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the Council for approving the Deputy City Attorney position, George McManus, uh, who's been practicing law in Springdale for close to probably 30 years, will be joining us next week, and we're excited, and we'll get him around to introduce you to you. Good deal. All right. And Sabra, we'll be seeing you around starting next week, right? Good deal. Uh, I don't. I don't have anything else. So moved. We got a motion to adjourn, and we stand adjourned. Thank you. All.